Okay, so I'm going to go over a little bit of statistics just to refresh people who maybe have forgotten this from prior experience. So I'm, this is just a little bit of statistics, enough for that we can figure out how many simulations to run and how long to run a simulation. So uh, remember that uh, during a simulation over time, we're going to get certain values of the metric. There may be some initial oscillation, and then we'll get some steady state value, and then there's going to be some kind of cool down period. So we're looking at values over here. And for, uh, we, let's say in the ith time we run the simulation, so the ith run, the value that we get is going to be called x sub i. So that is the value from the x uh, uh, ith run. And so if you run the simulation, let's say 100 times, you get the values x1 for the mean q length, for example, x2, etc., until x100. Okay, so uh, the xi over here, this xi over here is a random variable. So xi is a random variable, and we can think of the value taken by xi as the value assumed by the ith random variable in that run. So what we have therefore is instead of viewing these as a hundred values, uh, we can view these as a hundred values taken by 100 random variables, RBs. And so the uh, then we can use this slight change in uh, uh, in uh, attitude to uh, use some statistical theory. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say when we have a set of random variables x sub i that is a set over here, then we're going to make a very strong assumption. We're going to assume we're going to assume that these are these variables x sub i are what are called iid independent and identically distributed which means that the distribution of the x sub i is the same and these are completely independent of each other so what does this mean in some sense what we're doing is we're saying that the mean value of x uh, that the value computed of x sub i in this interval for example the mean q length is like doing a random trial of some kind of of some sort and then that each time we run the simulation, we're doing a different random trial. And so uh, as far as we're concerned, these are ident uh, independent. And because it's the same simulation, they're identically distributed. So if this assumption is true, then uh, we can say that the distribution over here, the identical distribution, we'll say that the distribution has a mu as its mean and it has sigma as a standard deviation of sigma square is the variance. And so uh, this means that all the x sub i's are drawn from the same distribution whose distribution value whose mean is mu and variance is sigma square. Okay, now we're going to define something. We're going to define a very important quantity and this quantity we're going to call is uh, xn bar. And xn bar is defined, and we use this little triangle to mean this, is defined as uh, 1 over n sigma xi. So essentially, it's the sum of the values divided by n, and we also call this the sample mean. So uh, remember that the true mean of the population is mu. And here we're computing a sample mean xn bar, which is this, and these two aren't necessarily the same. Uh, the true mean is what is actually true, but we never, we don't necessarily know it, but we can always compute xn bar because we are running simulation, we have the 100 values over here, so we can go back and compute the sample mean always. So one simple thing we can see is that the expected value of xn bar, so what is the value xn bar is going to take, is going to be the, can be just expanding xn bar as expected value of uh, 1 over n sigma xi, and this is nothing more than uh, uh, 1 over n uh, uh, sigma, sorry, the expected value of 
sigma xi and this is nothing more than n mu over n which is equal to mu and we see this because this is just substituting for xn bar over here and then because uh, uh, n is a constant I can move it out of the expectation and then it just becomes expected value of sum of xi and since each of the values xi has an expected value of mu the expected value of the sum is going to be n mu and so we see that the expected value of x, uh, n bar therefore is mu. So the expected value taken by the sample mean is the population mean over here. So that's great, but then uh, what can we say about the difference between sample mean and population mean? How far is how far is uh, the expected value, or how far is x n bar from mu? And so uh, let's spend a moment to think about that. Okay, so uh, x n bar is the sample mean. We know what it is. And we kind of know that it's sort of in the neighborhood of mu. And so if we have, uh, let's say it's a unidimensional statistic and this is the value mu, then xn bar sort of lies in this region around mu somewhere. And one way, to, and, and we know that the expected value of xn bar is mu, so know that we know that mu is in the center point of the zone over here. So this area around mu on either side is roughly where xn bar is, but we don't know exactly where it is. But um, one way we can think about this is to look at the variance of xn bar. How much does it vary? And we, uh, we define this to be expected value, but, but this is the standard definition of variance to be the expected value of xn bar uh, minus mu squared. And so this is uh, nothing more than the variance of the value sigma xi by n and for the, by using the standard rule for variance that means constants come out when they come out of, of the variance they become squared this is 1 over n squared uh, sigma var of uh, xi and this is going to be 1 over n squared this is going to be sigma, so it's n times, and the var of xi, the variance of xi, well, it's drawn from the distribution with, uh, with the uh, standard de deviation of sigma and the variance of sigma square, so it's going to be n sigma square, and this just becomes sigma square by n. So, in other words, the variance of the sample mean, the variance of the sample mean xn bar is given by this value sigma square by n, which as you notice is essentially 1 over n, the, uh, it's n times smaller than the variance of the xi. So this is xi has the variance, uh, it's, it's given from mu sigma square, so it has the variance sigma square, but sigma xi by n has a variance which is n times smaller. And so this basically means that as we are going to create a sample mean with larger and larger values of n, the variance in that becomes smaller and smaller. So that tells us the rule of what to do. If, if you want xn bar to be in a smaller area or on mu, to make it tighter and tighter to mu, then we need to basically make n go to infinity. And the bigger we make n, the more close xn bar is going to be to mu. And so uh, this is the reason why we'll need to have many runs because each run of the simulation many runs needed and so where many means n and so n runs will allow us to do uh, will allow us to make this value of the variance smaller and put the value of the measurement closer and closer to the true value of the mean so how many runs are needed well for that, we need to do a bit more statistics, and I'll continue with that in the next little segment.